Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're really excited to be here today. And uh, so far, we've had a great morning. I hope I can lead off this next section um, with a punch. Um, my name, again, is Mary Vichelia. And I'm from the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, more, most widely known as NCCN. I'm here to today to speak to you about a fiber-based approach to chemotherapy to order templates. I'm joined here today by Peter Lamb, our medical informaticist, and he's over in the back there, as well as Lee Superant, one of our, uh, the JSTAR project managers at IBM, who is also in the back, waving his hand. They've both been instrumental to the work that we're going to be presenting on today. A little bit about me. I'm a certified oncology chemotherapy registered nurse whose main role at NCCN is to make sure that we are providing the most comprehensive supporting information to our end users of our chemotherapy order templates. This information, to be, information needs to be in the most up-to-date, usable, shareable format as possible. And today we're really excited to share, this, uh, share how FIRE application is helping us to do just that. I wanted to share a little bit about who we are at NCCN. In 1995, a press conference was held to announce the creation of a national alliance to develop an institute of a national alliance to develop and institute standards of care for cancer patients. NCCN was born. With 13 original NCCN member institutions, the goal was to ensure a high quality, cost-effective services to people with cancer across the country. We are now an alliance of 27 of the world's leading cancer centers, including Duke Cancer Institute, who became a member in March 2002. Happy anniversary. Now that you know who we are and what we want to achieve, it may be worth expanding on what we actually do. Sharing a vision is one thing, but how you action on it is another. The NCCN guidelines are developed by 48 individual panels with over 1,100 clinicians and oncology researchers from the member institutions. These panels are multidisciplinary with disease-specific specialists. And got disease. The guidelines undergo annual institutional review, and their content contains decision pathways in the format of algorithms that outline step-by-step -step clinical decision-making support processes for patient management. Of note, in 2016, approximately 7 million copies of our guidelines have been downloaded, with nearly half of our registered users reporting to live outside the United States, representing 180 countries. It's truly amazing the amount of coordination, collaboration, and expertise that goes into producing these guidelines and what we're able to share worldwide. We also have derivative products stemming from the content of our guidelines, and one of our most requested uh, products is the chemotherapy order templates. So how do we share this information? Currently, our guidelines and templates are available online and can be downloaded and printed in a PDF format. It's kind of a one-trick pony and not easy to ingest. One of our current initiatives is to digitize our guidelines and chemotherapy templates so that the information can be easier shared and consumed to execute, execute upon. We are currently working with EHR vendors to integrate our chemotherapy templates specifically into their systems. With the templates continuing to be in a PDF format, this has been a manual process for both us and them. This is where FIRE comes into play, so that we can have a universal, standardized way to share this information. With this in place, not only will it make the information more consumable, but will make it easier to communicate into the systems with things like changes in chemotherapy dosing or versioning updates but it also make it easier to retrieve information. Providing structured data for chemotherapy regimens will help ensure patient safety, cost efficiency, measure adherence to guidelines, and support clinical decision processes. As noted on the previous slide, one of our most widely used products derived from our guidelines is the NCCN chemotherapy templates. While the individual elements on this template on these templates are not unique in of themselves. It's a collection of the information in one place that makes us a unique product. It tells a story. In order to tell the story and keep it true to ourself, our software creates the fire language on the backside as a template is being created on the front side. With this in place, we now have a better way to communicate changes and updates to the system. Plan definition was the fire resource that we felt would best represent the content. This is currently listed as an example on the FIRE spec and can be viewed at the link above. This will take you directly to a link that will show a narrative with the example of this um, kidney cancer regimen. And you can also look at it and, and view the, all the, um, the uh, 
the more technical side of things. <laughs> Plan definition resource was chosen for a few different reasons. The resource allows for definition of various types of plans and, general enough, and is general enough to support clinical decision support rules, order sets, and protocols. So it makes absolute, absolute sense that we would have chosen this uh, resource to represent our tools, or templates. It also contains a hierarchical groups of actions where each specific action definition is an activity be, to be performed in the form of activity definition resource and creates relationships along the way. It can also describe when and whether the action should take place. This would ultimately drive to a group of orders and care plan with relationship values ultimately driving to medication administration. There's also a lot of flexibility through the use of extensions, which we can further use to define and standardize the data. It's also not reliant that a specific patient has been assigned at this level. We can define, define by the indications but don't have to have an actual patient identified at this level that would be that would actually come into the care plan. One downfall is that a lot of there's a lot of unused elements in the care plan that don't apply to our use case scenario. So you'll see there's a lot of blank elements and you have to sift through to what actually applies. We also like that um, in fire in general has a focus on implementation uh, implementators with its open source availability with the growing community. The work that's been growing momentum, this work has been growing momentum in its maturity level along. Um, we're hoping that this will move the maturity level along quicker. This is where it gets challenging though. The regimen of our template is cut and dry. Give this drug in this amount, this route. Plan definition does a really good job with absolute data and is easy to represent and there are multiple resources to derive it from. But this, the majority of our information is text rich and may not be easy to represent as an absolute data content. The reg regimens alone do not create the story. It is quite literally the tip of the iceberg. It's all the supportive elements um, that fall below. And I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to have these evidence-based, consistency-driven information represented and represented well. It's critical to the outcomes and truly is the difference between a patient staying on treatment or not. The indications tell me that this is the right drug to give to this patient or the, for this cancer. The references link me directly to the actual article that this chemotherapy regimen is derived from. One might argue, and I'll make that argument since this is where my specialty area is, that the supportive care section is the most important element. This gives everything else that helps support giving this chemo to, so that the patient has a successful journey through the, through the process. Uh, our, the notes that are in there are oftentimes not directly derived from our guidelines and are sometimes anecdotal and just from pure experience. And so to help to express that can be often difficult. To give an example, vincristine, which is a chemotherapy drug and it's been around for quite a long time, can only be given through IV. It's fatal when given intrathecally. We have built specific notes into our, into our support of the literature or support of notes that would help support that it should only be administered and um, put into a bag versus an IV push. Um, this is driven not only from uh, actual evidence-based research, but from personal experience of our CEO who had the unfortunate experience of having to care for somebody after this had happened. The unfortunate man um, was, was uh, unfortunately had three days to live. All these elements need to be represented in a way that is intuitive and follows a workflow and any missing pieces can be quite literally disastrous. We've been working diligently to make sure the regimen is accurately represented. And the focus now is expressing all the supportive definitions. My vision is that these templates would be presented when a patient with a specific profile is created and drive all the necessary orders and actions to, so that this can be a successful cancer journey. There's still a lot of work to make this happen, but as I said, go big or go home, or I've always said. The second challenge that we stumbled upon is language. While seeking feedback at the working group in San Antonio for our implementation guide, we had a lot of interest to better understand the chemotherapy regimen as a real-time case scenario, but also as an, uh, as, at an international level, as much as the treatment options are universal regardless of not only where you live but what or what language you speak. The risk by not looking at this is that you'll see we're, we're starting to see siloed work, and so um, given that. Um, Given the standardization and the objective of interoperability, we feel that this is a really great time to make this happen. Sorry. 
We want to establish an international standards representing chemotherapy and oncology information and fire, and we need you to make this happen. From the interest generated from the Connectathon in San Antonio, we put together a project spec to push this, push this to the next level. Next week will be our initial meeting for the International Chemotherapy Implementation Guide project. This work is being sponsored by the CEDS and pharmacy working groups. This project will allow the international community to collaborate and come to consensus on patterns to be used within fire resources and implementations around chemotherapy regimens. I'll be facilitating this project. Please visit our wiki page for more information or enjoy the conversation at chat.fire.org by subscribing to the Chemotherapy IG stream. I hope that next year I'll be able to come back and be able to share the information that we have driven from this project. Thank you.